Yeah, sure. I'm going to hit record yes. and then we can share this later also for the people who have not managed to, uh, to join us. So, Belia, thank you very much for joining us and over to you. Thanks, Kun, and, and thank you to you and your team and to each and every one of you who've taken the time um, in your schedules to, to check in with us. We have a time limit, um, so what I'd like to say up front is that I'm quite willing to share my entire presentation with you because I've also designed some tools for you as part of our discussion and so you, you can use it by all means. The only thing that I do want is um, please just credit me and my company when you do use some of my slides. Otherwise, use it freely um, and where it can help you to improve performance. So again, thank you to Kellen, Talent Cafe and Kun for really making it so easy for us to connect. So the first thing I thought I wanted to talk to us, to all, all of you rather, is to, to look at what are some of the challenges and the concerns in the so-called new normal of the COVID-19 world. I mean, how will it affect our performance in our organizations and what can we do, you know, to make a positive change and take these challenges and turn them into actual performance opportunities. Kun indicated that there will be time for questions at the end. So I think if it's okay with you, I'm going to just run through the slides and maybe you can make notes of where you want to ask questions. And I will pause when I want you to specifically answer a question and then you can just turn your microphones on um, if that's okay with all of you. So just very fresh into my inbox, in fact, um, last night, I found an article, I'm happy to share it with you as well, but I just copied and pasted this particular slide to, to show what are the global risks that we are all facing. Now, to look at a bigger picture, I mean, they put this article together in terms of global risk for investments, but I thought, this is so pertinent in terms of what we're going through and how to change performance. I mean, we are all going to be affected in one way or the other by climate change, water security, et cetera, et cetera. But particularly, you know, the demographic shifts in people um, and how it will affect our education and healthcare and infrastructure, but also how are we going to cope with, with different people from different parts of the world, perhaps, working in our organizations? Um, and, and how are we going to cope with what are the kinds of skills and competence um, we, we need to consider? So I thought, you know, this has a lot of impact also, and it has an effect on how we will go forward just from a bigger picture. So if we move on, I've broken the first three slides down into the work, worker and workplace. We all know that we have had no control over anything that happens in the world. We find ourselves now in this pandemic, this COVID world, that is, we hear the experts say, um, it's not going to go away. And how if we look at people in our organizations and how we are going to help our line managers and our clients, how are we going to ensure the safety of when we are in these new environments back at the office? I know some of you are um, working remotely. Um, we are all more or less going back on Monday with um, you know, staggered employees. So it is, it's so strange that we need to look at what will the new skill set requirements be, you know, and particularly a talk that I listened to yesterday about the emotional well-being. You know, us in, and I'm just making an assumption here that you are all in HR and related fields in human capital, you know, they say the actual wave of the next pandemic that will strike us in organizations of the emotional 
burnout and stresses of employees. However, we don't have time to ponder that. But that these are all kind of part of what we need to consider at a worker perspective. Then if we move on to what, what is changing in the way we work, um, if we look at you know, our workplace, if you look at the, the systemic little model I have at the bottom of the screen, um, you know, any organization is operating as a system. And that system is really part of the people who make performance happen. We have the operational side and we have the workplace side, which really is, would be the culture, the communication, the leadership practices. So some of the questions that we may want to ask ourselves, you know, how has leadership changed in working remotely when we return back at the offices? Are they going to be more empathetic? Are they going to, are they currently sensitive to the way we work remotely? Uh, what are the kinds of change management things? And, you know, I like to talk about or refer to the touch and the, and the, um, the touch and the tough impact points. And, um, you know, the, the touch ones are typically the things that we can see and, you know, the t empathy that I referred to earlier on. Um, but also um, the tough things that we don't always easily, you know, can recognize. So if we move then on to the operations, you know, wh what are some of the change policies and, and, and procedures that you need to relook and change and some of the goals and targets and strategies that will impact this COVID world that we are, that we are facing. So uh, what I've done is, um, first of all, I just wanted to briefly, some of you may be, may know this uh, systems thinking or this systemic view of our performance improvement practice. And, and, and what we really are interested in, whether we are operating now or in the future, and we also don't know what are some of the other things in our external environment as per the world, what will, what will change that will affect our performance. But what we can control, we can control how we work in terms of the operational stuff, the processes, our value chains, how are we aligned in terms of those, we are the gaps and misalignments in terms of the different business units and departments. We can control uh, the skills and competence and capabilities of our workers, the individuals and the teams. But what we can't easily control, or that you'll see in, in a minute that it's probably a little bit more difficult are those things that we term in the workplace we can't often know what is the culture of the organization and how it affects performance. We can't often see how engaged or not non-engaged um, employees are. We can't always know the leadership practices and the leadership styles unless we really do a deep dive. Now, if I... If I ask you to look at, well, I'm going to ask you um, in this particular chat and going forwards that we just focus on identifying what I call the barriers to performance. Maybe in your language, you, you can refer to, as, to it as the drivers of, of performance. You'll notice that I've indicated our six steps in how we improve performance. But today I only want to look at the barriers. Now, if I show you this picture that's on your screen right now, that's an iceberg, right? So a few rhetorical questions. So, I mean, what do you see? You see both what is above the waterline, 
that we also know, all of you, and I'm sure you've all seen the movie Titanic and you all know that in 1910 or 1908 when, when the Titanic sank, we didn't, they didn't have the technology we have today to see what is the extent of the iceberg below the waterline. And I'm sure you, have, you know about the iceberg theory. It's, it's used in many instances. But I thought I'd use it today in, in indicating why this is so difficult for us sometimes to look at our performance indicators or the barriers. As I've indicated earlier on, it's, it's easier to see and it's more visible to see what are the performance indicators or the barriers at a people level and at an operational level. But when we look at the invisible performance barriers and indicators at a workplace level, which is below the waterline, it's not always that easy. Doesn't mean we can't do it, but it simply means we have to have better tools, better job aids, different ways and methods of finding the information to lead us to what are the things that are in our way in terms of the workplace. Things like, how can I identify what are the most effective leadership practices and leadership styles for my organization or the particular department or the particular business unit? What, what do I need to change to bring about culture, a new type of performance culture that I'd like to refer to culture about? How do I understand and find the information and the barriers for perhaps disengaged employees? So I have put three tools together for you. So the three tools are really about how we identify and remove the barriers. The second one is how, how we then promote the enablers once we have identified those barriers and how do we develop and change the behaviors. Now, these have become more pertinent as we move on because we are never going to be in any normal situation. Like, things will never be. I mean, the... the I'm sure you are flooded with information and articles and newsletters about the new normal and how we'll never return to the way we were. But that doesn't mean that we shouldn't be taking the challenges and turn them into performance opportunities. And our basic ways of working and thinking and doing around improving performance will remain the same. We still need to understand what are the barriers. We still need to then say, well, once we've identified the barriers, how do we support and promote the enablers that will enrich um, our performance? And then, of course, what is anchored in performance are people's behavior. So let us move on then to the first barrier. Couldn't help my mood. How am I for time? So the first tool is really to look at, and, and this is just a template. Um, you, must, you must make this your own. These are generic words I've chosen. You must repopulate this for your own situations and your own environments. But what you will immediately see is at the left, I've indicated our systemic view and I've, I've left world out of this because world, as we've seen below, below the waterline, also very hard, well, we can't control it really. Look what happened with COVID-19. So if we look at the left-hand side, I've looked at work, worker and workplace, and across, I've looked at our typical value chain of input process output. I'm taking you through this particular one, 
And if we look at the first input barrier at a work level, I refer to as the functional barriers. So once we are back at the office and we have a new normal and we are doing social distancing and we're wearing masks and we're sanitizing, how are we functionally, what are the functional changes we have to make? Are there structural reporting lines that we have to change? Do we have to form smaller project teams, for instance? If we look at the next level, which is the process barriers, ask yourself, well, what are the misalignment barriers at an operational level? Which departments are misaligned in terms of working together? And you need to form your own set of questions for each of these categories in these barriers. Then if we look at the last one, the output barriers, what are the, some of the compliance and governance barriers that are in our way or that we need to change as a result of this new pandemic that we are living with? Second line, if we look at the worker, that's usually the easiest one. At an input level, we need to look at, well, do we, do we have to change skills and competence? Um, and, and coupled with that in the next block, I've, I'm speaking about the technology barriers. You know, do we need to give people new skills around tech? Do we need to put new systems in place and train people like we are all going through zoom and teams and you know go to meetings and and all all the new project management tools that are available and and knowledge management tools and then at the output level at a people level we need to ask well how how will motivation change has it changed do we need to re-look really at performance motivation and engagement barriers? And are there any of these barriers that are in our way in getting our businesses up and running again? Because this is really why we want to improve performance. We want to get going. We want to make sure that we make up for the lost time. But we can't, Rome isn't built in one day, as they say in the classics. We cannot just jump in with solutions and start training or start doing surveys. We need to understand what are the barriers. Because once we have identified the barriers, we can then focus on, so let's look at the enablers. So then the last line of the workplace, we typically have the communication barriers, you know, and that's one of the, the biggest things that, that is affecting um, communication. You know, three basic things that I've picked up over many of the articles that I've read uh, over the last couple of weeks and months is that during this difficult time that we find ourselves in, we need to have clear expectations of what it is our employees need to do. You know, um, there are, when we look at leadership practices, there are managers who still believe that it's a luxury working from home and that they lack the sensitivity and the empathy of what it is that we need to juggle when we are working from home. So the second most important point is that we also need to have a culture of accountability. Even though things are tough, things are different, things are in a new normal, we need to have clear expectations firstly, secondly, a culture of accountability, and a third one, to have improved communication and collaboration. We need to be extra vigilant about how we communicate. Um, yeah. So I think I'm I've, yes. For a 10 minute reminder. <laughs> yes, I'm, I'm, I'm finished. 
So I'm going to just show you the second tool when I'm not going to take you through it. Um, because those are again a generic template. You can decide what are the words and what what is the how do you find the information? What will work for you? What are the typical enablers that you need to promote further and support? Again, at the level of work, worker, workplace, and in our value chain, input, process, and output. Then the third one, I looked at behaviors. The same routine you follow, those are just generic ideas that I've put in there for you to populate. So you can use these three tools um, to pop, you know, to create some questions and take them to your line managers and your department heads um, and your clients and start mapping the bigger picture around what you need to do and what you need to change. For those of you who are interested um, in this presentation, I'm not going to take you through it, but the, I call it the new human performance skill. How do you future-proof your careers um, in going forwards? Then what I've, um, I've added in the presentation is our methodology. You, you can work through it and, and just follow the, the areas. But what I have put together in closing Kun, is um, Hot of the Press is my new ebook in terms of what I call the essential job aids for performance related people in HR and performance consulting in the field of performance improvement. And if you mail me, it is available at a very reduced price of just 100 Rand, and I'll send you the complete ebook. Then um, that's just in closing. There, there are my details, and now I really give it over to Kun to facilitate some questions, and we can take it from there. Or if you want me to navigate to any of the slides, then go for it. Kun, you are muted. <laughs> there you go. I was just about to say that you are welcome to unmute yourself. Um, to okay, thank you. Any questions? Um, we have about five minutes left before Zoom will kick us off. Um, Shemaine, have you got a question? For <laughs> me. I don't have a question. I'm interested in the book. Okay. But I have been yes. uh, yeah. details. Just mail so me and definitely just make just a, you know, I'll give you the details from. about the EFT and I'll send you the PDF. Yeah. Uh, no problem. Thank you, Charmaine. Good. So we will send those details to all of you um, with the with Delia's contact details um, as well as the, the presentation. Um, and you're welcome then to contact her directly. Um, for any of the resources that she's shared today. Are there, any Are there other no questions? other questions? <laughs> no questions. I know it's a limited time and a lot of information to share. What are you struggling with at the moment in terms of the performance of your staff? There's a question here in the... Um, Anybody? Yes, chat box. Just a, a thank you. I think it's very valuable uh -oh. what you said, Delia, in terms of the the um, the worker, the the workplace, you know, and to identify the different barriers, you know, in terms of process, um, you know, skills and competencies. I always find when we do performance management that we are very quick to jump straight to the worker to say, you know, you lack motivation you lack um, skills, you know, and we make it very, very personal where, you know, if your company strategy is not right and your product is not something that is, 
you know, desirable in the market and, you know, all of this, then, then you can't really expect anybody to, to, to perform unless you remove those barriers, make sure you've got the right product, the right process, the right environment. And only once those things are in place, you can actually get people to move them, um, you know, to be able to perform instead of jumping in and saying, you're not motivated, you can't do the job. There's something wrong with you as the, as the employee. Yes. Yeah. If there's no other questions, then we'll sign off. Um, we have uh, secured our next speaker for two weeks from now, um, which is on the, the 12th of June. So I'll send out invitations again for the 12th of June. We have uh, Memory Ngubi from um, Zimbabwe, who is going to talk to us about the um, capacity assessments. So sort of trying to identify high performers in your company um, using psychometrics and, um, and different uh, types of assessment. So I look forward to seeing all of you there. Um, we will share Belia's um, video, the slides, um, and, and everything else. So if you would like to just unmute yourself uh, to say thank you to Belia um, and goodbye to the rest of us, then um, we'll sign off. Thank you so much. Bye-bye, everybody. Thank you. Yes, thank you for your time. And I, um, I look forward to hearing, hearing from all of you. <laughs> Stay in touch. You know. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye. Bye.